like, what? This is a desktop, why do you want to install that? This is a normal PC, why do you want to install... <laughs> and then I had this issue with Og, and for some reason wouldn't just play, and even after, even after I put on a thing that would get Og playing, but... But in general, it was, it, other than that, it sort of worked quite well, and it was, other people had different experiences, obviously. But I, I mean, it is a good distribution, and it's one that they actually mentioned on BBC Click in the Webscape many, uh, quite a long, quite a while ago now. And it's they say, if they yeah. met, they're very, show, very. Show about ICT. Yeah, they, yeah. About, they that, 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 it's not, nothing to do with technology, it's just ICT. It's just gadgets and mobile <laughs> phones and yeah. Facebook most of the time. Click and click, click, click. That's the uh, the main of the the name of the show isn't very indicative of what you're supposed to uh, know to understand. The no, show. it's just very uh, click and drool. <laughs> I, yeah, it's just very um, BBC Click, yeah. Facebook. Let's go on about social networking sites. But I did a dent. You, maybe you missed it. Oh no, I linked to it in text. Yeah, I did a dent. Where I joked and basically said. Oh, uh, well, Identica is more like Facebook now. Maybe we should, uh, maybe somebody should tell BC Click about it. After oh, yeah. All, yeah. After all, they go on about Facebook and Twitter too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's all, but they actually mentioned PC Linux service on Webscape, and then some people ended up on the full mode result, and somebody in the IC channel, I think it was, and I was there on the IC channel. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, I was going to say something else earlier about my little brothers, Chris, quickly, I'll just say it. So I had them on GNOME and Ubuntu, you know, to customize it when they got me some change in 10.4 that I didn't like and whatever. But eventually I decided, like, oh, all he ever really does is goes on Firefox and stuff like that. So I might as well just, um, why, why not try them on KDE4 in Mandriva? It's quite nice. And it, it's, all, I mean, it's like Windows by default. It's more like Windows by default. Maybe he will actually shut down the computer the proper way. But of course he didn't. But it's like I don't care. Who care? Yeah. I don't care. It's just KD. It's it's not like before where I sort of cared about that because of the icons or whatever it was. But um, so yeah, I've got him on K KD and I'll, and I've tried him on Gnome Shell, the old preview before, not that long ago actually. I had him on there and I was like to him, he wanted to switch over to his account. So I like said to him, okay, how do you switch over to your account? And he just he just like he just couldn't figure it out or something. But he's quite he's quite young as well, so it's probably why as well really. But it makes and then I, I when I had GNOME Shell there, that preview in Mandriva, and I had my brother's computer, I'd put my older brother on KDE as well, because I I sort of thought GNOME Shell's the sole preview. Yeah, it's nice for people like me, but it's it's a bit like a toy in a way, and people think that about the latest one as well. Now they. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of negative stuff on the internet about it. People going on about it being too touch, too much like a touch screen interface, too much like a mobile phone interface, or or how it lacks features from GNOME 2, or whatever it may be. And it's it usually happens when they try and uh, and later on they sort of uh, put it in quotes, kind of backward some features that are missing. Yeah, and try. And people to... do it about Unity as well to an extent, as of course. But uh, um, so I mean, then the power. Of the shut that they've actually hidden the shutdown button in GNOME Shell by default, which is a bit stupid. Well, you've got to pick, press Alt to get it on the menu or something like that, and then it's just a bit silly. Why is the shutdown button not there? But then there's an extension that adds it back. And what I think is going to happen with GNOME Shell is it's going to become like Firefox, probably, where where they'll be you'll have the default setup, yes, but of course, obviously, but then you'll have all these extensions for it as well. I think over time it'll be a bit more like Firefox with quite a lot of extensions for more features, which I think is a good thing. You know, yeah, well, the, there is the abstractization of, of platforms in general, so even Android is an example of taking what could have been a so-called ecosystem of things like Migo, and, <clears throat> and in some cases it used to be Lips and Limo and all kinds of stuff, and trying to turn it into a central point uh, where you would have probably something based on Linux or Darwin or something, uh, which is just mostly a platform that allows you to make phone calls or you know whatever basic functionality, but it's mostly a shop that's supposed to attract the good developers to offer all kinds of nice applications for you know GPS and uh, and nice games and uh, three yeah, things. And, yeah, it, and this yeah. is what actually makes the the platform because people are getting it for the applications. Uh, and in yeah, the same exactly. way, is the, uh, the the reason I, I I'm still using Firefox to an extent, but it's not my main browser anymore. 
It's because it's got it's got so many extensions. I couldn't give it up. It's not because it renders pages faster, because it's so nice with my memory. It's actually very nice with my memory. It's taken up loads of RAM, and uh, it's just that uh, certain things that I need to do uh, depend on extensions that only latch on to uh, Firefox using uh, Azul um, object. So, so certain things that I could save me a lot of time and allow me to do things that I couldn't otherwise do are tied to the whole framework of Firefox. And, and the same goes for KDE, so I couldn't give up KDE so easily because it's got some certain functionalities very specific to the to KDE, so yeah. I obviously have to get KDE to get these functionality. I, I, I like, um, yeah, KDE, it's like, uh, I mean, there was a tech I was talking about before, the past one, where you are going on about the feature between GNOME and KDE and how you can, what can, can GNOME do that GNOME 2, obviously, not yeah. Shell, but what can GNOME 2 do that KDE can't do, and the slideshow got mentioned, the background change slideshow, and that... It's possible I, to do in GNOME with... Uh, you can do it with... Yeah, uh, you can one do that it. I know of uses mono. I think it's called something with, like, curtains or something, uh, shades, GNOME shade or something, uh, uh, shades, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I saw, uh, there's some add-on programs for that. And I tried some before. I didn't really get very far. They were all, like, they weren't very good or whatever. Um... So KDE, I mean, I did. I used to do it with KDE three. I, I put the background change of slideshow on. I did. I do it with KDE four. I put the background change of slideshow on. I like, and with Mandriva, they well, they come with the, some of the obviously the default KDE four um, pictures, which yeah. are nice. But then they got the old, in the 2010 series, they got these nice um, the old branding. I really like the old branding. From what I've seen of the new branding after trying well trying to virtual machine Mandriva 2011, and it not quite working properly. For whatever yeah. reason, virtual box and booting off the live CD, which is quite slow. Or well, live DVD actually, because it's deep. There's some reason it's a lot bigger, so it's from DVD. Yeah. And it's just I didn't like the new branding, and I, and I knew that I would get if I upgraded to Nintendo 2011. If I looked, so I wouldn't have my old GNOME shell preview that I really liked that I was on about as well. I would lose that. So it's like yeah, I'm not going to bother. And so anyway, I put the background change the slideshow on in KDE, so I like that. And I did it in, uh, another like, uh, that's, but I don't really get very far with KDE. I, 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 if I try and, it's not like Gloom 2 where you have the panels and you can just, you just like unlock icons or whatever and move your icons around really easily or you go and put, uh, add icons to it or whatever and then obviously Gloom 3 is a bit different but that's fine, really. Um, from what I know. Uh, anyway, so, the, I always found KDE a bit, a bit too geeky, to be honest. It's, I mean, yes, it, I mean, it's also, it's still a distribution as well, and how they sell it up. I'm, I'm very much with the default. If I'm going to use KDE, I want it set up good by default, how I, how I like it. I don't want to, I know that if I try and customize KDE, I get in a mess. If I try and add, I, if I try and move, add anything on the bottom bar or panel, I want to call it, and go into the customize mode, I've tried in Mandriva, I've tried in, and I've tried in Kubuntu, I've tried in whatever, but, I, I, I seem to get in a mess. I can't just move why icons where I want them or the clock goes in the wrong place or oh, it just get in a mess. If I go into settings and try and add things like the bouncy ball, you know the bouncy ball? Yeah, I don't... I've played with that before and it... Yeah, <laughs> it's the best app add, ever. Yeah, well I've added, yeah, I've added, for example, the bouncy ball, I've, I've added that and I've, I've just like messed up and had it going all over my desktop thinking how do I turn off? I've always found KD. <laughs> you're not I, supposed to. <laughs> you're supposed to know what you're... Uh, it doesn't sound like a very useful application, does it? No, it's not. I was yeah. using that in the sample, but it's just if I try and customize KD, I seem to always get in a mess. Yeah. I, I, so that's why it's important for me to have a distro I, I kind of I, agree with you on KD4. I have some issues sometimes when I yeah, try KD4. the widget. And, uh, and the, the menu which is used to add application or dislike application, tends to stick there when I don't want it around anymore, and it tends to disappear before I actually make a selection. And this is a kind of a, you know, that could improve the sensitivity. Yeah. And I see different versions of KD, like, they seem to have changed a few things, but no. I don't get it right. So it's like, I, I sometimes go crazy just, like, trying to add a widget, and then it's just, like, Slides down. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. Come back, come back here. <laughs> yeah, you, it's like, yeah, you, some people really love KD, and I just don't understand it. It's like KD has a learning curve. KD four, KD three does as well. But I remember KD is being better. I, I mean, I still use GNOME two as my main desktop environment at the time, but and KD three was latest. But I did. You still there? Yeah. yeah. I, I still. Uh, I ran KD three. 
sometimes and it was quite nice and there was i remember these like you know graphics with it as well the snow background and all that kind of thing and i should try out trinity really the trinity project default uh, virtual machine